can't believe it! The new Super Friends video number three! Ow! Welcome to Super Frogs video number three, going bananas with banners. Always a great buy at Hornbuckers in Moorhead, Minnesota. Hi, my name is Butch Antone. I have Super Frog Signs and Graphics in Moorhead, Minnesota. What we're doing here today in video number three, Going Bananas with Banners, is we're going to give you some basic information about banners. A lot of people have confusion in regards to banners, and so what we're going to attempt to do today in a short period of time is we're going to try and solve a lot of those problems. We're going to explain to you what a banner is, basically. We're going to explain to you the different kinds of banner materials. We're going to explain how to paint a banner so that you can have a colored background and do it very quickly. We're actually going to create a banner for you in approximately a 30 minute time frame from beginning to end. Painting the banner, putting the vinyl down and everything else so you can take it out and physically install it on site. To begin with, the banners we're going to use today are going to be banners that are made by U.S. Banner Corporation out of Greenville, South Carolina, or North Carolina, I'm sorry. And the banners themselves, this happens to be a 10 ounce banner. It has a scrim woven into a vinyl fabric. The scrim is actually a polyester type thread. You can see it on the back side. And then this is the front side, which is the smooth part. And what we're going to do is that we're going to paint this particular banner today. Now, there are approximately three different manufacturers in the United States of banner type material. Again, banner type material comes in approximately 8 ounce, 10 ounce, 13 ounce, 15 ounce, 18 ounce material. All that means is that the higher the number, the higher the ounce level, the thicker and tougher that particular piece of material is. Now the actual weight of the banner isn't as important as how you use it and where you put it. A 10 ounce banner material is more than ideal for everyday use of banners and banner material in your shop, outdoors, out of your shop, hanging on the wall between two poles, stretched on the side of a building, or whatever the case may call for. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use this particular banner material. It's a U.S. Banner Corporation's 10 ounce vinyl banner. One of the things that we do in our shop is that we use banners that are already pre-made. And what I mean by that is that the banners are already fabricated to a specific size. What we've learned by going through our records is that the most common size banner that we sell in our individual shops is 3 by 8 feet. So what we do is we inventory a whole bunch of 3 by 8 foot banners. We make 4 by 8 foot banners. We have 4 by 12, 4 by 10s, 3 by 10s, and 3 by 12s and then we go to a smaller size such as a 4x6 and a 3x6. Those are the most common sizes you'll use, but 3x8 being the most common size. Now, if you talk to the banner manufacturers, the most common size banner made in America is 3x10 feet. So you get the idea that the range is right in there. So what we do is we buy an inventory of those, we have them in stock at all times. The reason you do that is you can expedite a banner very quickly and make a lot of money from it, and that's the name of the game. Now the banner, the vinyl we're going to use in our banners today is going to be the MacTac vinyl. We're going to use an intermediate and a high performance. And as I said earlier, later on we're going to go and actually do a banner from beginning to end. Now this is an example of a couple of banners that have been done in the past by me. This particular banner is done on a polyester or a regal type banner material and this banner is over 10 years old. And you can see that it's in still pretty good shape but it's done a lot of sign shows, about three, four years worth of sign shows, probably 75 different showings. It's been rolled up and put into a tube every time. So that's one of the things you have to emphasize to your customer. Take care of your banner. This is an investment. Rolling up with the letters to the outside and the paint to the outside and sliding it into a tube will protect your investment. This particular banner is about three to four years old. And again, it has, this is vinyl. This is hand painted and the background is all hand painted. This panel is hand painted. These letters are vinyl or polyester type material. This particular banner, this is a vinyl stripe. This is a vinyl letter. This is hand painted. It's a painted background. And of course, this is a digital print that was made for me by the Gregory Corporation out of Butler, Kansas. And then of course, I just cut it out and applied it to the banner. But this is an example of what some nice banners can be. One of the things that's important about banner material, 
and this is probably the biggest area of confusion for people, is this. There are two types of banners. Excluding the weight and the ounces and everything else, there are two types of banners. The number one type of banner is a banner that's made out of banner fabric and it does not have any coatings or protective coatings onto it to allow you to paint it. That is designed specifically for vinyl letter application. Now, the other type of banner material is ERC, enamel receptive coating. What that means is that the manufacturer has run it through a coating machine and it physically has laid down a surface of chemistry that allows that banner to be painted. But why is that important? Well, it's important from the standpoint of that one of the more common types of paints that we use in our sign shops nowadays and so on is a one-shot lettering enamel or a Ronin, Ronin lettering enamel or a chromatic lettering enamel and each of these types of paints are a solvent base. Now if I take and put this solvent base paint onto a vinyl substrate that has no coating on it, what happens is we experience what we call polymer movement. There are plasticizers in our banners and the plasticizers lay there dormant. The minute you excite them with a solvent such as mineral spirits, lacquer thinners, various kinds of paints, it wicks those plasticizers to the surface, causing your banner to become sticky. And if it gets sticky, it's never going to dry because that plasticizer is laying on the surface. Now if you ever do that, and you screw up by painting the wrong kind of banner substrate or material, you can go to a product that's referred to as Enamicoat. And what you do with the Enamicoat is you take a foam brush and you physically brush it over the top of the vinyl banner with the solvent based paint onto it that's sticky and this will cause it to dry. And then you can in turn go and apply your vinyl letters. It is a way of saving that particular job. But when we use an ERC banner that has an enamel coating on it, that's a enamel receptive coating, ERC, or you'll hear about enamel coating or enamel receptive, either way. What happens is that that coating is a coating that's put down on there and it's water base. The water base neutralizes the plasticizers from migrating to the surface. So when I put the solvent based paint on there, it lays on the water base coating and it does not migrate into the background allowing the plasticizers to come forward. So therefore you can paint on an ERC banner with solvent base or water based paints. Now I want to impress upon you this one thing. If you're using a water based paint it doesn't make any difference what kind of vinyl banner material it is. This will always stick and adhere and this will dry. So it's very important that you understand that water base can go on any of the vinyl substrates or any vinyl fabric or anything that you use whatsoever for outdoor and indoor application of vinyl to fabric material. Now, let's take a tire cover for instance on an automobile. A lot of you get involved in painting those and so on and so forth. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot go directly to those with vinyl and have success for a long period of time. So what I do in that particular case is I take and put down a color or a coating of water base, for instance in this case DecaSign enamel, or I could use the Ronin Aqua Coat over the top of that tire cover and get my vinyl letters to stick to it or I can get other paints or lettering to stick to it once that coating is down. But just remember, water base goes on all of them. Solvent base only goes on the ERCs. Now, one of the biggest problems that people have is that you'll call up and order a banner from your manufacturer. He'll say, yep, it's an ERC. They send it to you. You get it into your shop and you paint that baby and it never dries. But they told me it was ERC. Well, what they tell you and what it is are two different things. So one of the things that I have done in my shop is I buy nothing but ERC banners, enamel receptive coating banners. That way if I paint it or don't paint it, it doesn't make any difference. One of the things I have learned about an ERC banner also is that if you take and put vinyl lettering down onto an ERC banner, it sticks even better. So that's another handy tip that you can use down the road. Now, one of the things we're going to do, I want to impress upon you the fact that I cannot teach you everything I know about banners and installation and everything else all in an hour that has taken me 20 years to accumulate. I'm going to try and impress upon you how you can make money in your shop 
very quickly. To begin with, we're going to paint a banner with some solvent-based paint. Again, I have an ERC banner coated from US Banner Corporation. All right, we're going to use your standard gray foam roller. We're going to use a three inch roller. What we're going to do is we're going to physically pour a little bit of paint on this. Now this comes with experience and practice. These are small sample banners. It doesn't make any difference whether you're doing a large banner or a small banner. Just pour out your paint accordingly. Now most of the time I will paint these upright on the layout board in the shop. But for video purposes, we've established and set up this little area to work in, and we want to show you how it works. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pour a little bit of paint on here. And again, this is a solvent-based paint. And it doesn't need very much. Just enough to get your, low, your roller loaded up. What we're going to do now is we're going to roll it in all directions. And one of the first things you're going to learn about solvent-based paints is that they splatter a little bit, and they also get bubbles in them. Now we're not going to roll all the way to the outside edges in that. And the reason for that is because I want to be able to handle it for this demonstration. Now normally you would. And if you do, it's not a big problem. You just roll it all the way out to the edge by going along like this and just rolling it. And you've got your edges covered. Now again, as I said earlier, you'll notice that there's bubbles appearing on the surface of the banner. All you do now, once you've got it covered, is to take your roller, go in the opposite direction, and just use the weight of the roller and nothing else. I'm not pushing real hard. I'm just letting the weight of the roller hang in my hand, and I'm just slowly popping all of those bubbles. It's called re-rolling it. You re-roll it. Usually, if you let the paint sit for three to five minutes and then go back and re-roll it, that also works, too. But basically, you can see that we have a very glossy, very shiny type surface. The only drawback to this is, of course, once you use a solvent-based paint, this is going to take anywhere from two hours to 10 hours to dry, depending upon the color that you choose. So what we have to do is set this aside now and allow it to dry. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move to a water-based paint. And at that point, we're going to set our clock and our timer and we're going to show you how you can do a banner very quickly. Let me get rid of this. We'll get rid of this roller here. Now, one of the things that I've learned in my shop, and one of the things I've learned about making money in my shop, is that how many times does a customer walk into your shop and he says, well, I need a purple banner and so on, and you don't have a purple banner in inventory, and your distributor is 200 miles away or he's even across town and you can't get one that day because he doesn't have any purple banner material. Well, this is where the water-based paints are to your advantage. You can physically paint a banner purple, and within a 30-minute time frame, actually apply your vinyl and go out and install that banner. So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to get another banner, this being another ERC banner from US Banner Corporation. We're going to get another roller, and what we're going to do now is we're going to take our DECA water-based sign enamel, and we're physically going to paint that banner and go from there. So I'm going to go get the clock, and I'll be right back. Here we are at the Super Frog Banner Test Facility. I'm here with Kirk Antone, the banana stunt driver. He's about to perform banner test number 692. It consists of a high-impact test, high velocity, crashing into this banner and banana below us here. All right, is it a go? It's a go. All right. as concerned about this as much as I am, the banana seems to suffer a whole. The banana lost its skin. <laughs> Now one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to expedite a banner as quick as possible. I'm not recommending that you do this for every banner because it's not necessary. But I'm trying to impress upon you how quickly you can make a banner 
painting the background, applying the vinyl, and doing everything that's necessary to it to take it outside and install it. Because that is a very viable concept, especially if that customer walks into your shop at 8 o'clock in the morning and he wants a purple banner with verbiage on it in three different colors by 1 o'clock in the afternoon to be installed. So what I'm about to show you is going to be very valuable to you. Now you know what, in fact, the, the time it takes us to do this pizza, I mean this uh, banner is about the same time it takes us to order a pizza and get it in here. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to order in a pizza right now and see if we can't get that in here. Hello, Domino's? Yeah, this is Super Frogs. You want to send us over a pizza? Give us one of those, oh God, not anchovies. I hate anchovies. Send over uh, sausage, uh, pepperoni, and so on, mixed all blend together. Make it a big mother, because I got all this crew here filming this video, and we got to feed them. What's that? About 30 minutes? Ah, no problem at all. All right, thank you. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take and try and beat the pizza man, and we will set our clock and so forth so that you can see how long it's going to take us. So we'll set our clock right at 12 o'clock. Then that way we can keep good track of how much time it actually takes us. Now hopefully we can get it done before the pizza man gets here. What we're going to do is we're going to start out with a enamel receptive banner from US Banner. This is a 10 ounce. We're going to use the DECA water-based sign enamel. We're going to put a very small amount on there and then roll it somewhat a little bit dry because what that does is that expedites and speeds up the drying time of what it is that we have to do. So what we're going to do, we're going to pour a little bit of paint on there and it doesn't take a lot. It's amazing how little paint that you actually need. And then we're going to roll this around and we're going to do all the edges. We're going to go all the way out to the edge like this. And one of the things you'll notice is that the water-based paints have a very similar feel and touch that the solvent-based paints do and that it's sticky, it's gooey, it does suck a little bubbles in there and so on. But one of the things about water-based paint that's entirely different is that the more air you wick into it, the faster it's going to dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll it all over our surface. Do our edges, make sure we get our coverage here. And I probably poured about an ounce and a half to two ounces in the center of this little banner. This is 18 by 24 inches. And the more you work with this, the more proficient you become. And the quicker you can do this. Now, as I said earlier, the more air that you wick into it, the quicker it's going to dry. So I'm going to keep rolling on this for just a little bit, just to get some air into it. And then by doing that, I'm going to pop any bubbles that might be there. And at the same time, I'm going to go the other direction. And that way you evenly disperse your paint. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're painting a banner is they get a gob of paint on there, they paint this area and they paint that area, and this is thinner than this area. So this takes longer to dry. So the important part is to re-roll it. And by re-rolling it, at different angles and different directions and all I'm doing now is using the weight of the roller again. I'm not applying a lot of pressure. And then I'm going to go back the other way and I'm going to do it again just a little bit like this. And what I'm doing is I'm wicking more air into it. But you can see that I got a beautiful finish and it is very glossy. And the more and the faster you make water-based paints dry, it goes a little bit semi-gloss. It takes a little bit of the gloss off of it. But that's okay. I'm not offended by that. And again, I'm going to roll it one more time. And one of the things about water-based paint is if you're doing a banner, and what I mean by a big banner, I'm talking a banner that's, let's say, uh, 4 by 20 feet long. Roll your banner in increments. Roll, roll, uh, paint a 4-foot section or a 5-foot section by 4 feet. Paint that. Then go over and paint the next 5-foot section, and then come back and re-roll the first section. Then go back and paint the third section, come back and re-roll the second section. And the reason for that is, is because it allows it to tack up just slightly and if there are any bubbles in there and you re-roll it, it will knock them down. It will also knock the gloss down, but don't worry about that because the gloss level will come back up. Now, I have a really, really decent coat of paint on this and it's turning out really nice. 
and so on. And you can tell by the snap as you roll it, you can kind of hear it go as it goes across it. Maybe not just like that, but close to it. And what you do is you get that feel, and pretty soon you'll learn to read that kind of a sticky noise that you make with the roller as you put it across there. And when you do that, you'll know exactly where you're at. And again, go the other way again. And you can work this as much as you want until it gets to a certain point where it really starts to get sticky and drag, quit and get off of it. Because then the gloss will come back up and then everything will be just fine. Now I want you to realize that even talking to you here and kind of taking my time, I have, I've got just about five minutes on my clock. I'm going to do it one more time from the side. And again, I said I'm going to take you from beginning to end as fast as I can. So we're going to roll it just this one more time this way. And then that basically should do it. Now, I'm in a hurry. I want this to go rather quickly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my hair dryer. I'm going to grab Big Bertha here. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply some heat to it. One of the things about water-based paint that you'll find is that there is a window to it. What I mean by that is that the window is about 15 minute time frame. So you can go from zero to 15 minutes and do whatever you want to do to it. You can work on it, you can roll it, you can change colors, you can add other colors into it, you can do blends on it, whatever the case might be. But once it reaches about that 15 minute window and the windows come down and it's closed, get off of it and leave it alone. And then you can go from there. But we're going to speed that up. We're going to close that window really quick. We're at about a six minute window now. I'm going to take it to a 10 minute window and then we're going to be done with it. So we're going to apply heat. I'm going to use the high setting on my hair dryer and I'm going to use it on hot. Now one of the things that you will find in your shop is when you paint with the water-based paints onto a vinyl banner and you just leave it alone all by itself and let it air dry in your shop, it's going to take about a half an hour, 45 minutes maximum for that to dry to where you can physically apply vinyl. Again, here we're going to great extremes to try and get this to dry much quicker. Now I can do a finger test on this and I can tell right now that I've surface dried it and it's a little bit wet underneath. So we'll hit it with some heat to set it up. We're at about the uh, eight minute mark right now. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to let that cool off just a little bit. We'll set it off to the side over here. And I want to bring in another banner and show you what we can do while that's drying. This is something that you should do for yourself in your own individual shop. Make yourself a banner and put the word banners, banners, banners on it. And again, we're using the three-tiered pricing concept that was explained in video number one. And the importance of this is that you know that a banner costs X amount of dollars according to its size. So let's say, for instance, a three by eight banner that's got a white background with red letters on it, six inches high, let's say six words or less, is going to run about 115, 120 bucks. Well, use that as a starting gate. Let's imagine that that's this banner right here. So this is a $100 banner. This can be a $150 banner. This can be a $200 banner. Or this can be a $100, $200, or $300. Or this can be a $100, $125, or $150. I don't care. Whatever price you put to it, that's just fine with you. But have a starting point and then just multiply that starting point. And that's basically what we're doing with this particular banner, is we're using it as a sales tool in your shop. Have you ever noticed that when a customer walks in and he says, I need a banner, what's the first thing you've noticed about that? Is that they never know what size they need. They, never have, they don't have a clue as to how big it is, really. And if they do, hey, then you're dealing with a smart cookie. And this works even better. Because then what you do is you go, well, which of these three banner styles do you like the best? And what's going to happen is that they'll choose this particular range 95% of the time which means that you'll be able to charge more money for doing something that you enjoy doing and is really easy to do. So again, make yourself 
a sample banner like this, hang it on the wall in your shop, customer walks in and says, how much is a banner? Find out the size, qualify them on which of the three he likes the best, and then go from there. Okay, any questions? There'll be a test at five. Now, let's go back to our other banner again. It's had a chance to set a little bit, and as I said earlier, we're closing the window down on it. Uh, it's, you can hear the tack on it. And what the tack does is it tells me, I can read the tack. Now, I didn't hit this outside edge with as much heat, and you can see I'm pulling a little bit of the paint off on my fingers, which means I didn't close that window. Here I closed the window. I went very quickly to close the window. So what I'll do is I'm going to show you how I can close the window on that by coming back in here with some more heat. Now by using the heat on there, I've shut the window on this. I've closed it down that 15 minute time frame. I closed it down to let's say six or seven minutes. Now I'm going to use a clean finger, not the one with the purple on it. I'll use a clean finger and I will touch it and you will see that there is no paint on that finger. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is that you can manipulate and control the drying time or the paint as needed. If this was a four by 20 foot banner in your shop, you're definitely not going to walk around with a hair dryer and do that. But what you can do is get yourself a 12 inch pedestal fan, a fan that sits on a pedestal and have it oscillate back and forth in front of that banner. And what it will do is it will close that drying time window down to about 10 to 15 minutes so that you can work on the banner quickly. So that's the things that you have to understand is that normal rule of thumb is 30 minute window. But if you're going to work on it and do something with it, you can close that window down to 15 minutes, you can close it down to 10 minutes, you can close it down to five minutes, depending on how much air and heat that you apply to it. We're gonna bump this with just a little bit more heat and then we're gonna apply some vinyl to it. Now, remember, just a couple of minutes ago, I went and did this with my hand and it stuck. And you'll see now that it doesn't snap. Now watch over here. This has snapped to it yet. So that means this is drier here than it is over there. And again, it's only because I applied more heat in this center section. So now, let's do this. Let's physically go in here and apply some vinyl on top of this. This is basically ready to go. Let's do another test. And as you can see, no paint pulled off. You can hear it sticking and kind of snapping together, but in reality, it's not sticking. And no paint has pulled off of it. So now, what we'll do is we'll take and apply some vinyl to this. Again, I pre-cut my vinyl. I cut some MacTac vinyl. And in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to assemble a little banner that says Super Frog Signs on it so that we can utilize it in the shop. There are two ways to do this. On a large banner, you can hinge it and so on and so forth. On a small banner, you usually can just apply it direct. But one of the problems you have with banners is you see these wrinkles here? These create a problem for you. So what you've got to learn to do is start on one side of your graphic and work it across there and push those wrinkles out ahead of you. So for instance, we could actually do a hinge method on this if we wanted to just to eliminate problems. What we'll do is we'll take masking tape and we'll run it down this edge here. Now as far as it being straight on there, I'm just eyeballing it. And then what we're going to do is we'll get ourselves a squeegee and we're going to use a soft squeegee, which is basically a rivet brush. We will lift this up and we'll take it over to the side like this, get rid of that, and then Holding this like this. By working it from one side to the other, we can push those wrinkles out that I was talking about earlier, push them out ahead of us, and that way we don't get any big wrinkles underneath of us. If for some reason or another you were to have the fabric bunched up underneath you and you get a ridge in it, the best thing for you to do is to take your X-Acto knife and physically slit that vinyl 
right down the middle and then apply a patch to it afterwards. So basically we have our application now and what we're going to do now is we'll remove our masking tape. <gasps> I pulled the paint off. Nah, I'm only kidding. <laughs> and then if we wanted to we could actually take wrap attack for instance and wet the back side of it and I know this is water-based paint and you're thinking oh my god you don't want to do that and then we can physically pull this off Like so. Now, I have a little bit of a ridge right there, and I have a big bubble right there, a little bit of a ridge right there. And the reason I got this ridge in here is because there's a ridge in the table underneath of it here. Okay, but watch now. I'm not going to panic. You take your X-Acto knife out. If you got a bubble, go get rid of it and push it down, just like you would if you were doing it on a flat substrate. Bubble there, bubble there, bubble there and so forth. So we actually do have a crease in there. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to physically slit that like this. That allow me to open that crease up like that. And you can see now that I slit that and I have a crease on there in my vinyl, but I'm not going to panic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply all my graphic and then or I can physically go in here now and apply a little patch over that. So somewhere back here I have some black vinyl what I will do is I will take and apply a little patch over it. Now I'm not going to try and hide these things from you because these are things that actually happen in your sign shop. These are things that will actually take place when you're doing a banner or you're making a banner. And so this is called, this is the neat thing about vinyl is that you can patch these things and hide it and nobody knows the difference. Your customer definitely doesn't know and your job is to make the job look good and sell it and lots of times if you get the installation it's not a problem. So there, basically we made our basic application, we even slipped that, got rid of that crease, we patched it and so on. Now we're going to go to our next level. In this particular case we're going to apply our yellow and what this is is it's a visual of a frog And I'm using the Transrite 1510 clear pre-mask so that I can physically see through my mask and apply my vinyl like this. And again, I'm going to use my rivet brush in this case like that. We'll remove this. I got a little piece here that we didn't weed off of our background. We'll get rid of that. Then we'll go to our next piece, which is our green frog. We're going to lay this in here about like. This again, I'm running a river brush over the top of it. You know, having the clock running there adds suspense to this and so on because it's like exciting movie where the climax is coming, you know. But we're in good shape though. We're only at the 19 minute mark right now. We're applying our third color on here for our frog, which is about like this. All these are little highlights. And the same thing is true with a big banner. You can do a, a 
a three by eight banner in basically the same amount of time without any major problems. Now what we'll do is we'll add the final touch here, which is the eyeballs and the teeth, which makes for a happy frog. And basically the only thing we have left, of course, is we have to put the lettering in the word super frog signs and so on. So what we got to do is we cut this earlier, but just to show you how confident I am about the fact that I can do this quickly, we right now are at the 20 minute mark. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab some frog juice colors and I'm going to physically airbrush a piece of vinyl and weed it and apply it and basically that'll finish our banner for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an airbrush blend across the bottom of this like that. Let's add a little bit of yellow into that. Make it more of a sunset color. Woohoo! Boy does that look cool or what? Then what we're going to do is we're going to bump that little bit of heat And what the frog juice colors stick extremely well to the MacTac vinyls. By bumping with heat, what we're doing is outgassing the thinners into the frog juice colors, allowing us to do this rather quickly so that we can weed it and physically apply it. And one of the reasons I use all the accelerants, in other words, heat, air, and so on and so forth, is because I understand the theory of paints. And paints, that basically what it means is they dry by means of aeration. It takes air to make it dry quicker, and the heat also accelerates that. So that's why I'm always doing things quickly. I'm always speeding up the process, just so that I can get done faster and make more money. The only reason you would want to do all that, of course, is so that if you make more money, you can wear these Hawaiian shirts, which you actually get in Hawaii. So you get the picture here. So now what we've done is we've airbrushed that letter. We're weeding our lettering. Weed out our centers. And we're ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Transferite 1510 Clear Pre-Mask. And of course, you understand the logic behind the Clear Pre-Mask is so that you can physically register it over the top. Now you notice that we have a static problem here, okay? And you probably think that I wore this Hawaiian shirt making you believe it's summer outside. But I got news for you. It's January in Minnesota. So by spraying this with the wrap attack on the back side, not the adhesive side, the back side, I took the static out of it. Because in the wintertime, it's very dry here in Minnesota. So now, once we've done that, we squeegee it. And of course you have to do a good job of squeegeeing if you're going to make this work. All right, so now that we've done that, we're going to go back to our banner. And we're going to apply our letters like so. And basically, what we've done is we've got a finished banner that you can see right here. Now, you'll notice that working on a fresh banner, what I've done in a couple spots is I ticked it a little bit there, I gouged it with my X-Acto knife up there and so on and so forth. Don't panic. All you got to do there is to go back in here, 
take a little bit of color, it's on, on the end of your finger, and you can use a Q-tip for this if you want to, and just go in there and wipe a little bit on there, like that. Because as true with any job, there's always what we call the touch-up phase. The touch-up phase is the last thing that you would do to that particular job to make it customer ready. And I expect that to be the case on any job that we do. So basically, as you can see, we now have a finished banner from beginning to end in less time than it takes to get our pizza here. And Domino said they'd be here at 30 minutes. So I want you to understand that when you look at our clock, you'll see that we did it in 26 minutes from beginning to end. So now, once we've completed this, we're ready to go out and install this banner, which is what we'll do in just a second. Here we are at the Super Frog Banner Test Facility again. We're now prepared to do our test number 101, the deep water immersion test. Now we now go to our diver. We're about ready to install our banner. And when you go to install your banner, oh, by the way, the pizza was good. When you're ready to install a banner, you should be using a bungee that's the black type of bungee, not the ones from Walmart or Kmart with the braided stuff on them and so on and so forth. Because the problem with those bungees is you stretch them and you hook them, they stay stretched and they never go back. So they don't give you what you need from a bungee. These types of bungees you can buy at uh, Home Depot, Builder Square, uh, you can go to any of your farm implement places, uh, TSC stores, uh, Menards like we have locally in our area, and they will have the black rubber bungees. Fleet Farm and other farm stores got them. This is the kind that you want. Every once in a while when you install between poles or between uh, fixtures or you want to put it on a bungee system to a wall, the bungee may not be the right length. It may be too short, it may be, I mean, it may be too long, or it may be too short, or whatever the case might be. If it's too short, buy a longer bungee. If it's too long, take the bungee and physically tie the bungee in a knot. And what that does is that shortens up the distance of the bungee so that you can make it tighter. So now I have a little teeny short bungee. And that's what you have to do sometimes. Now in our particular installation here where we're using the bungees, we're going to do exactly that. What we do is you take and you hook the bungees through the D-rings. Now usually I recommend you hook them from the back side to the front and so on, but it doesn't make any difference. You want to watch and see where you get wrinkles or ripples in it. So we'll hook up our first set of bungees by going like this. And you can see that we have the tension is straight across the top. You do not, I repeat, you do not want to go like this because what you're doing is you're stressing the sewing right at that particular point and mother nature of the wind will definitely create problems for you. So by putting the tension straight across the top is much better. Now in this particular case we're going to come in with our other bungee to the bottom on this side and you can see what happens. So you need a four point attachment system and we're going to do like this. Now what's happening here is I've got to get the tension such that it's like down a little bit. Let's see here, it ain't gonna work. There, it's better. Now, sometimes turning the bungee to the back there, see, just turning that around, how it took those wrinkles out of there. And basically what this does is this gives you a free-floating banner that's gonna pop in the wind, and it's gonna bounce around in the wind. And then by doing that, you're going to allow the banner to bounce, the wind will spill off of it, and so on, and eliminate a lot of problems that you might have. A lot of people are of the illusion you have to cut these big wind holes in the banners. They don't really do you any good. 
you have to understand that the wind hole to accommodate you to do you any good would have to be in a banner that's five feet, six feet wide by 30 feet long, cut the big wind holes in there, and the wind holes would have to be like 12 inches by 12 inches. And then all you're reducing then is 15 pounds per square foot. So if you have a banner that's 50 feet long and you get 100 wind holes in it, then basically what you've done is you've reduced it by 1,500 pounds of pressure. Then it's effective. There's only one major problem with that. With that many holes in the banner, there's no banner left. And it's going to totally self-destruct. So the wind holes are really not necessary if you do a proper installation on this end over here. One of the things that you can do is you can take a pliers and squeeze these closed or shut. Or you can physically take and put a ziplock from here over to here. And that'll keep these from popping out. Very seldom does it happen, but if it's in a situation where it might happen, just squeeze these shut with the pliers, and that's all you've got to do. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go outside and show you how to do a flat installation against the wall. When we go outside and install a banner against a flat substrate, like a wood wall, a concrete wall, or whatever, what we do lots of times is that we will use the washers with a drywall screw through the middle of it. And what this does is this washer disperses the stress or the weight of the wind load on through the washer instead of onto the banner fabric. And that's very important. In this particular case, you'll notice that we're using a large one. This is referred to as a fender washer. So the bigger the banner, the bigger the washer. So let's go outside and do that right now. We'll take our rechargeable drill with us and we're gonna go out and install this baby. Follow me. Here we go. Woohoo! What we're going to do now is we're going to physically install our banner to a flat substrate. In this particular case, we're using a, a sheet of plywood here that's mounted to one of our rental signs. But it doesn't make any difference if it's the side of a building or the fascia on the front of a building with shingles on the front or whatever. It doesn't make any difference. This is the same application. What I will do is I will physically put my screw in the one corner like this. And then if it's a really long banner, now in this case I could eyeball it, but if it was a really long banner, what I do is I tape a torpedo level across this corner. And then I just move it up and down until the torpedo level tells me that it's square. And then once that happens, then I can screw it down. Now just by pulling this up and down, I tension this corner and you can see there's a wrinkle in it. By lifting this up until the wrinkle's gone means it's now straight. So what I will do now is I will put my next screw like that. And then I'll come over here, put my screw into the bottom corner like this. And I am pulling down and putting tension on it. There's another way you can do this. You can hook a bungee in there and pull on it if you want to. And that helps also. Now you'll notice that this is a D-ring. So what you do is you put it to the outside edge of the D-ring and pull it tight. This is a grommet. So the same thing applies here. So what I'll do is I'll put my screw into the hole I'll pull down on my corner, and then I go like this. And basically, you have an insulation against the flat substrate or surface. And that's it. You're done. Here we are at Super Frog's banner testing facility. We're about to perform banner test number 36, the hammock. Every good sign painter needs a place to lay down in the middle of the day. What the heck happened? Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Right on Billy! Woo-ha! We can go left and right too, like a strong wind would. We can go up and down, and we can wiggle all around. We've had repeated failures in the hammocks test, simply because we've used a fixed installation system, meaning that we tied the corners down with ropes, tried to lay on it, and the dead weight of my 200-pound massive body had a tendency to rip the corners out. But, as you can see, using a bungee installation system. The bungees allow enough flex in the banner and the banner materials for me to sit here and take my afternoon nap. Splashes Trailers is one of my favorite customers in that he moves about every three to six months requiring new signage each time. But due to the cost that we were putting into his signs, I recommended to him that we do a permanent banner system that he can move with him from site to site. So what we did is we took five banners, we made them all up with his logo on them, and then each time he moves, he takes the banners down 
and he puts them up at his next location. But one of the things I insisted upon is that each banner be installed correctly. What we did is we took pieces of Trovacell PVC sheeting, painted it the same color as the banner background, and put bolts directly through the Trovacell, through the grommets, to hold the banners in place. This is a good installation, and these banners are over two years old and have been on three different locations. This is a 4x8 banner that we installed at Flashes. And again, you notice that we pinned it down permanently to the building. Flat installations will give you a lot less problems than an installation that is out where the wind can get at it from both sides. There's a temporary installation that we put up just to advertise the use of our new swimming pool and the scuba classes coming up. You allow approximately six inches between the edge of the banner and the pole. Remember now that this banner you're looking at is in 25 to 30 mile an hour winds. Here we have a classic example of a banner that is installed improperly. This was installed by the local electrical company. There is a steel cable across the top, but unfortunately they cut wind holes in it, which creates a problem in that the wind holes will create a back pressure on the back side of the banner, causing it to flop even more had they left the wind holes out of it. Here we are again with banner aerobics. This is probably one of the lousiest installations that I've ever seen of a cross the street banner. This banner flopping in the wind physically caused damage to the street light post that it's attached to. This is another example of two extremely poor banner installations. Due to the lousy installation here, you'll notice that the banners have experienced severe damage. They tied a cable across to put the banner onto, but as you can see, they didn't bother to fasten it to the cable. They tied the corners off, and the wind, of course, beat it up rather badly. You can see how this banner catches the wind, and the wind holes do absolutely no good. You'll notice that the abuse of the wind has actually torn holes in the fabric. This is a polyethylene type material. But that doesn't mean that the banner is bad, it's the installation that's bad, the fabric is just fine. The Ronald McDonald's banner is an example of a good installation. The thing about it that makes it a good installation is the fact that they didn't use any ropes or anything and they pinned it down directly to the flat surface. Of course, any flat surface installation is the best way to install a banner, but he had the option of either pinning it to the wall or putting a bungee system on it, which I would have used one or the other. This is a classic example of an extremely nice banner, but it's installed improperly. It's a vinyl banner, and you notice that it's pinned at certain points, but due to the expansion and contraction of the banner material, it has a tendency to get a big droop in it, plus the fact that it is using strings or ropes on the end of it. A bungee installation system would have solved this particular problem. Remember, an installation is very important. Poor installation can ruin even a good quality banner. I do want to emphasize to you that the banner tests that we did in this particular video were done by non-professionals, and they were done solely for the entertainment value and the fun of it. But I want you to understand that it by no means reflects the quality of the products that we've used here today, because they are of the finest quality. With that, I'd like to say thank you very much, and we'll see you in Super Frog video number four. <coughs> what the hell are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,